Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome back to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up aquarium fish tanks for your own player homes. So these will be able to go into your player homes for other players to use, have them linked up to crafting systems, so on and so forth. So let's dive into it. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need to go ahead and do is make a change to your Creation Kit Innie if you have yet to load any CC content in the Scrum Special Edition Creation Kit. So this is very similar to if you have ever done the uh, changing of the Innie for the DLCs to load those in the CK or just multiple master files. So you're going to need to do a very similar thing here. So you need to go to your Skyrim Special Edition directory and you'll see that there is Creation Kit Innie here. And you can open this with Notepad or you can use something like Notepad++ like I'm using here. Uh, it makes editing any settings much, much easier, much easier to visualize. Uh, before you do this, make sure you have got the Creation Kit closed because you're going to want these changes to take effect and that's not going to happen while it's open. Uh, so let's open this up. And you're just looking along the top section first. You will need these two lines if you don't have them already. B, allow multiple master loads equals one and B, allow multiple master files equals one. I'll put those in the description down below so you can easily copy and paste them in. And if you scroll down to the archive section, you will see that you have a S resource archive list two equals Skyrim. And if you just scroll right to the end, you'll see what we've got are the Dawnguard, Hearthfire and Dragonborn DLC BSAs in there. And you just need to add the one for, in this case, fishing. So if you don't have these on here, you'll need to add them. You just do a little comma and then space and then what it is. And you'll need to do the same here. So comma, space. And to get the name of it, if you've downloaded the content, which you should have if you're looking to do this video, and go into your data folder, you will see that there is a, a one for fish.bsa. It's got all this gobbledygook at the start of it. I don't know why they've named them so horrendously, uh, but they have. Uh, so you'll need to click on this and grab the name. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and paste that on the end of the ini file. So ccbgssse001-fish.bsa. So all of that in there. And then go ahead, hit save. And we're just about ready to load up the creation kit and get started. Okay, so now that we've finally loaded into the creation kit, what you're going to need to do is locate the fish tanks in the actual game, in the player homes uh, that they're currently in. So if you go to the filter at the top here, I'm going to go under World Objects and Activator, and I'm just going to filter this to Fish. And if you scroll right the way down, you'll see that you should get results for Fish Tank Large and Fish Tank Small. These are the two activators. So if I go to Large, right-click and Use Info, you'll see that you get wherever this is used in the game. So I'm just going to use the Pale Basement here. Double-click on that. It will send you straight to where it's used. It's the easiest method uh, quickest method of getting to them unless you know the cell name of course and what you'll see here is we've got all of these fish tanks that are displayed in the hearthfire homes uh, what they did is they they made a separate little part of the basement i think uh, where they then put all this stuff in quite clever really you don't have to muck about with the the building design or anything just extend the basement and we've got these fish tanks in here and the way that these work is essentially they're all linked uh, to a central fish tank so one of these is the main fish tank. Although they all work individually on their own, they are all linked for the build your own home system uh, to this one fish tank. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is that we're gonna be copying and pasting, funnily enough, it, it is the easiest method for these fish tanks. Uh, we're just gonna copy and paste them, but in order to get them fully working, we need to make sure that they don't have that enable parent link. So we won't do that first, but I'll just show you what I mean. So you'll see under the enable parent tab, that you've got select reference in render window here and they are linked to other items or they will be initially disabled now if that's the case copying and pasting them will copy this information meaning that you'll actually go into the cell and they won't be there uh, so we will need to make sure that once we've we've got everything that we want we've copied and pasted in that we remove that information because if we remove that now we will break the hearthfire stuff so that's one thing to be aware of when you do want to just essentially copy and paste these it just copies all the links all the functionalities there the scripts are there uh, the other thing is if you go underground what they do is they place a container in the void that is used to do most of the scripting where the fish are actually stored and taken out of and then that triggers all of the actions uh, 
Now, funnily enough, something to note, uh, it's just interesting more than anything, is I don't believe they've included the source scripts whatsoever. Uh, I've ripped open the BSA and there are no source scripts for the scripts, so I can't actually see exactly how they've done it and what they're doing and when, but I've kind of been able to gather uh, from looking at the system how they've done things. Uh, I could probably write it better myself um, if I made my own system like I did with the, the Hearthfire stuff and having time pass and other cool things, uh, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, but just something to note, there's, there's no source, which is very interesting. Um, so we've also got this collision box. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this out of the way. So to hide things, you click on them and double tap one on the keyboard in case you've not done that before. And what they've actually got, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, if anyone finds this to be any different, but if I just double tap one on the container here, you'll see there's another container underneath it. And the containers are exactly the same containers. They're named the same. They have the same scripts on them. If we go into them, edit the base, they're the same container. And I think it's an error because we could actually go ahead and delete this and it doesn't bring up any warnings for deletion. It's just there. It's just a copy, which is really strange. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the dummy container. I know that this is the one that doesn't seem to be used at all because it's got no links to it. Uh, there's no arrows pointing off it in the render window. I'm just going to double tap one on that. And then the trick that I'm now going to use is I'm going to, without clicking anywhere, I'm going to hold down Alt and 1. And I've got that dummy one selected. And I'm just going to double tap one again so that I'm not going to end up copying the dummy container because we don't need it. So what that's going to do is it's going to leave the container that we actually want that I can easily select along with everything else. So what we're now going to do is just copy and paste this whole system. So I'm just going to click on this collision mark again. I don't need that. If you want to know what it is, it's just a nav cut. So it's a collision box that's used to cut out nav mesh when the fish tank is visible so that NPCs can, when it's not there, walk in the space. And when the fish tank is there, that cuts out the nav mesh to allow them to navigate around it. But I don't really need that here, uh, so I'm not going to copy that bit. That leaves us with the fish tank, the activator for the fish tank, the container down below, and also these markers and everything inside the fish tank. So obviously you can get creative and put your own items in the fish tank. So I'm not going to bother copying those. They're too fidgety. I might as well just copy and paste the system I need and then do what I want inside of the fish tank. And so you've got these markers here and what these do, I'll go into it in more detail in the next section where we'll set it up manually rather than copy and paste. Uh, these are essentially the markers where the fish move between. So it's kind of their patrol route within the fish tank. And there are, in the large fish tanks, I believe they hold three fish. And there are three markers for each fish, totaling nine markers. Uh, the markers link between each other. Uh, so if you've do ever done, like, patrol systems for NPCs, for guards and stuff, and you link all the markers together in a, in a route, uh, then that's essentially what this does, uh, but for fish. And the smaller fish tanks, if I can see any of them over here, I'm not going to cover those because they're pretty much the same setup. Uh, those, I believe, hold two fish, so it looks like they've got six. Or they might hold one fish, um, but they've got a collection of markers in there as well. But uh, if you do want to know exactly how it works and whatnot, like I say, keep watching the video. The next section will cover it. But what we need to do here, like I say, we get the fish tank, the activator, the container underneath and we need all of these markers so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click on each holding down control to select them all it's quite fiddly and annoying but if you're very careful with your mouse you should be able to discern which is which and get them selected and then select the activator the fish tank itself the physical fish tank by the way doesn't do anything it's just for visuals and then just go underground holding control again and click on the container. Now, again, I'm going to use the hiding trick. I'd use the, the hiding and show all trick quite a lot when I'm selecting multiple items. What you can also do is hit the batch button. So that's just dash on the keyboard. And this will bring up everything that you've got selected. So we can see that I believe I've got all nine markers selected, the tank, uh, the activator and the chest. That looks right. And if I just double tap one, we should see that the only things remaining are the items within the fish tank. You can go ahead and select those as well if you want. But what I'm going to do now is just hold down control, hit C, standard copy. And then I'm going to navigate to wherever I want this copied into. So in my case, I've got a, oh, I've got a test cell. I've just gone and clicked on, on the wrong place. So hang on. Let me click on this one. This 64-bit version of the creation kit, I do not like. I hate it. 
And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. So I've already got a fish tank over there. So I'm going to put it on the other side of the room. I've obviously been experimenting. Hit Control and V to paste that in. And as you can see, I've got the fish tank here. I need to move it around, position it, just so we know which one it is. I'll sort of nudge it around a little bit. Put it over here. Sink it into the ground somewhat, if I like. And that should now, in theory, just work. Uh, it will just work. It's using the scripts that are on there. It's using the pre-existing links and whatnot. But if you remember a little earlier, I mentioned that these are still going to be linked to other fish tanks in that area. So what we do need to do, just as a final sort of going over of this system, is click on each of them, make sure they're not initially disabled, make sure they've not got enable parents. It depends if I've clicked the, the fish tank itself. I may have actually clicked on the sort of mother fish tank. Uh, so these aren't linked to anything, but if they are linked, enable parented, simply click on the reference here and double click anywhere that it's showing red and it will just clear that out. And if any of these items are initially disabled, make sure that they're unticked as initially disabled. And then that will ensure that if you have copied something that's linked to something else, those links no longer exist. And it should be as easy as that in theory. Uh, you should be able to just copy and paste that in to your own player home and it will work. Uh, now I do have a video which I'll, I'll show at the top there. I'll link in the description down below if you do want to do a build your own home system. And you should be able to just enable parent these to your own system if you want to be able to build these in your own home. Uh, similar to how Hearthfire works. Um, but if you just want to dump it in the home, it's as easy as that. You can do the same with the small fish tanks. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to show you in the next section how you actually set these up manually and how they work in a bit more depth um, so that you can go ahead and make custom fish tanks. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is how to create a fish tank with the manual method. There's a couple of advantages to this. Uh, number one is the fact that you'll learn a little bit more about how these things work, which is always good. And number two is that you could potentially create your own custom fish tank. So you just design it however you like. You could have a large wall section with a huge piece of glass. I've got a resource um, pack if you want to go and find some sort of large piece of glass you could use. Uh, there's also some other resources out there. Uh, such as this one here, which has a collection of extra fish. They may or may not work. It depends if they are the right type of activator and how the script works. Um, but at least the fish tank element, the actual fish tank and any objects that come with it are really cool uh, that you could potentially use. So you would create your own fish tank and then you could have your own layout, your own patrol for your fish. You could have a much larger area for the fish. Unfortunately, the one thing that it looks like you can't do is have any more than three. Um, but what you could do to get around that is have a very large fish tank that has small fish and large fish and just have like a, an entry point on the tank at two separate ends that had small and large and you'd probably get about six fish in there which would be really cool. So this method is going to show you how to actually set them up if you don't just want to copy and paste the vanilla ones. So the first thing that you're going to want is the fish tank itself. Now obviously again you can design up your own and then fill it but um, just for the purpose of tutorial I'm just going to search for aquarium in the filter, go under static and I'm just going to go and grab and use the large one just because it's easier to just show you how to build it from scratch this way. I'm just going to sink that into the ground a little bit. The next thing that you need is an activator so click on this area here anywhere that you want really uh, just an object of a decent size and click the trigger box option at the top here and this will allow you to search for the tank activator so if you type in tank go down a fair bit extend this out a little bit and somewhere near the bottom you will see fish tank large act for activator click OK that'll give you an activator now you need to make sure that the gizmos appear if they don't you can tap to that hides and shows them uh, another thing to note with this gizmo for resizing this activator is that if ever you've got a preview window like this open close it whenever you're doing anything with trigger boxes and stuff like that just close that because otherwise it freaks out. It doesn't work very well. You can use Q and Control Q to toggle your snap to grid, which I'm sure you're all aware of by now. Uh, that's really good for sizing these to exactly what you want. So I'm going to make this sit about there, make it roughly the size of Bethesda's. And then what you need to do is double click on this activator and ensure that under the primitive tab, you tick player activation that makes sure the player can actually see it 
use it and it does stuff. Now, if you do find that after that you go in game and you still can't see it, um, it's not activatable, go under the 3D data tab and change some of the rotation to 0.1 something. Um, that will just offset it ever so slightly. It's a bit of a bug with the game. Um, so just do that if that doesn't happen for you. I'll do that anyway, just to be safe. And the next thing that you're going to need is the container. So for the container, if we just search, I think it might be tank and then go under container, you'll see you've got fish tank large chest, drag and drop that in. Tap M to see markers if you don't see it and put that into what we call the void. Put that where the player cannot get to it because we're going to use the activator to access it instead because this isn't a very large activatable zone whereas the activator gives you much more sort of room for error when you're activating something. The only side effect that this does have is that you can't actually see when it's empty when you're touching the activator because it's not directly interfacing with the container which is interesting. So what you'll need as well are a bunch of critter markers, a bunch of junk that you want to put in the fish tank for the fish to look like they're swimming around in. Uh, I'll leave you to put the stuff in there. That's that's easy enough. Uh, but before we do the marker setup and the patrol routes, uh, we might want to just set the rest of it up first. So first of all, click on your fish tank, do linked reference, double click, and where it says select reference in render window, just make sure that you can see your container here. Click on that, double click the container, OK, OK again. So that links that. It's about the only thing that the, the fish tank seems to link to. I'm not sure why. Um, so you may need to select like the big pane of glass to do that. I don't know if it really does anything because I think I've got it working without doing that. But we want to just copy it anyway just to make sure. Um, the next thing that you're going to need to do is this activator needs to activate the container. So in order to achieve that, double click on the container. Move it to the side of the render window so it doesn't get hidden behind it and do activate parents tab double click select reference in render window and double click on your activator click ok ok again so that links up to do that so that makes sure the activator does that you've got your tank linked up all the scripts will already be on there you don't need to mess with those you don't need to change any of that stuff that's perfectly fine the next thing that you do need to do however is you've got to put in your markers for your crit uh, for your for your critters they're critter markers that you need to do for your fish so if you type in fish in the filter and you go under world objects and static you're looking about midway down for fish tank critter marker and you're going to need three of them so if you're working with a small fish tank you'll only need two and essentially what you get is uh, three sets of markers you can actually have as many as you want but you'll just need two for a small three for a large fish tank main markers that you're going to be pointing to so i'm just going to line these up nicely first of all drag and drop them in line them all up double click on each i'm going to give them a reference bethesda don't do this uh, i would recommend doing it just so it's easier to select things and know that you're selecting the right thing um, so i'll do df ref fish marker zero one oh, already in use hang on let me just do a on the end of that that must be from a previously set up one that I was testing. And then we'll do it for those ones as well. So we'll do, well, we won't do one, we'll do 2B. And then we'll do 3B. You can name them whatever you want. It's not all that important. So I've got those three lined up. And these are going to be the points that the fish are spawning at and where they start their route. And essentially, if you've ever put a guard dialogue not guard dialogue, guard patrolling system uh, before. I've got a video on that as well. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. It's an old one though, be warned. Uh, so if ever you've set up like a, a patrol system where you just link a bunch of markers together, that's essentially all we're going to do here. Now, before we go ahead and do that, we do need to link the container to them with a very specific set of keywords. So if you double click on your container again, now you've got those markers. You're going to go under the linked ref tab, double click, and do select reference in render window again and you're going to double click on each one of these markers now for the keyword you're going to need to type cc and it will drag you down to this section where you will find fish tank marker kw01 and you're going to need to do this for each of them doing a different keyword for each so you'll do marker 2 for the second one now, if I just clicked off the container, shouldn't have done that. 
There we go. And then also the third keyword for the third one. Easy as that. So if you left it like that, the fish would appear in there, but they would not do anything. They would be very static. They wouldn't move and it'd be a little unrealistic. So the cool thing that Bethesda have done with this, and unfortunately, because they haven't released the source scripts, I can't see exactly what they've done to get them to move. Um, it seems like it will work similar to uh, sort of butterflies and things like that. These are usually their landing points, whereas here they're using them as markers to move between, which is really interesting. Uh, if you leave it like that, that's fine, but I wouldn't. Uh, you're going to want them to move. So if you drag and drop some more fish tank critter markers in, and just line them up like this to begin with. Don't try and put them in where you actually want them until you're done with this because it's going to be hell to sort of figure out. So I'm just going to line three up there and I'm just going to select them all just to make this a little bit quicker and line those up. Again, you can do as many of these as you want as long as they all link in between each other and then link back to the original one. Uh, you can have a much larger radius for the, the fish to sort of swim around in. And what we need to do is do each of these. So I'm going to click on my first one I'm going to do link ref. I'm going to link up to my first one. There's no keyword needed in this case. And you'll see that you get this nice arrow between them just to signify that they're linked. I'm going to click on the one that I've just linked to. And I'm going to do a link reference. And as you can see, what you're doing is you're going to make a chain. So I've just linked that to the third one. And then when you get to your final one, that needs to link back to your original marker. So each of these is for a fish. So these aren't all going to interconnect. It's just a set for each fish. So there's three fish maximum for a large fish tank. So we're going to go ahead and just set three of these up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. So once you're done, if you were to move the middle one out of the way, you'll see that you end up with this nice link between them. Perfect triangle there. Well, not perfect triangle, but you know what I mean. You've got a nice triangle perfectly between them all. And all you need to do now is just put them in position. So you'll place them where you want them to start, move to, end, and link back round to. And this can be quite a bit of trial and error when you're making your own if you're in an enclosed fish tank space like this. So it's going to take a bit of messing around uh, to make sure that the fish don't clip. But like I say, if you are going to use these fish tanks, I would just use the copy and paste method anyway. It'll work perfectly fine. It'll get them set up, no messing around. So if you are using this method, you'll have much less problems uh, than me because you'll have a larger fish tank that you've just made to accommodate all of these fish and where you've got your markers. So that is just about it. What we'll do now, we'll go ahead, save, jump in game and see if it's working. Okay, so here we are in game and this is all vanilla because this is on my streaming PC. So do excuse the menu. Uh, but if we activate the fish tank, we can put big fish in here. So I went ahead and got myself uh, some salmon. And if I just transfer one in to begin with, you'll see that he spawned and that fish is... Uh, a bit odd. He's sort of clipping because I haven't placed my markers very well, but that's fine. Uh, like I say, you'll be able to tweak that bit of trial and error. But you can see that he is navigating that patrol route that I laid out for him. And if I just activate this again, I can take him back out and he'll disappear. Activate it again and I can put him in with some of his friends. You can do different fish, obviously. I've just done salmon because they're very easy to just console in. And I don't want to spoil anything for those of you that may not have found all the fish. But I put all my salmon in and they are very, very awkwardly patrolling their routes. In fact, the others weren't too bad, but you'll also need to make sure that you, you place them in a way that they're not going to crisscross or anything because it might be a bit weird. So it's going to take a little bit of skill to kind of get it right. But you can see it, they all wander around and those markers really keep them in check. If you've ever seen like the standard fishing spots in the game uh, where fish are coming, coming right up out of the water and sort of flying, uh, this prevents that which is a really interesting implementation uh, but like I say you just need to get that that sort of placement correct
And that is just about it for another Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, of course, to see more videos. I am going to be having a video come out about the fish plaques if I can get those up and running. Should be easy enough. Um, so make sure you subscribe for those. And also check out my website at www.darfox127.co.uk for more. And thank you all very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time.